hey y'all hey welcome back to my channel so happy vlogtober but we can't forget about our notary documents so we're gonna go ahead and get into some notary documents we still got to learn people let's get into it today we're going to be discussing a petition for injunction for protection against domestic violence now this document will come into play when a person is trying to um, put a position against another person in the courts. Now, just in case a person calls you and asks you, do you have these documentations? You can either one, let them know that it's online and that they can Google it, or you yourself could Google it and print it out for them. But all of this is available online if you go to the courts, whatever county you're in. So then we'll go ahead and get into it. Right now, so the petitioner is the person that's going to show you their identification and that's going to be doing all the signing. The respondent is the person that they're bringing this judgment against. So you would write, they would write the name. So they're going to fill this out and most likely they might have a couple of questions for you if they don't understand something and you can just tell them because you're already looking at this document and you know kind of what to expect. So their name would go there and the respondent name would go there. And so you come down a little bit and once again, the, the petitioner name is going to go here and the petitioner's information will go into this section. So that's their address, their phone number, any of their characteristics, their, their date of birth. If they have an attorney, the attorney's information will go there. And if they don't, you write none. Right here it says that, write none. So it's kind of about reading a little bit. So then you'll come down here. And this information is going to be for the respondent. Now, the petitioner, the person that's in front of you, will put what they know for a fact already for the information for the respondent. If they don't know, they can just write none. But they need to put, if they know it, the respondent's address. And if they know it, their driver's license number. And you'll come down here and basically any other information about this respondent, they're going to put here. And then so we have like if they're married to the respondent, the date of the marriage, if they're divorced, the dissolution of the marriage, anything like that, um, if they have children together. So whatever is applicable, they would go ahead and select that. So then you'll come here, and this is basically the date. So basically how long the petitioner and respondent have known each other. So the day they met, and it's just a guesstimation. You, they would put that there. And for the respondent, where they work, and if they don't know the exact address, you can just let them know. You can Google it if you know like the area or the road. You can Google it and get the address. And if they know just about their normal schedule, you will put that there. And then you will come down here. And, and this is basically the physical description of the respondent. So everything she knows about that respondent, the type of vehicle he drives, if she knows his tag number, whatever it is. She would fill all of this out, even down to a nickname. And if he has an attorney, that information would go there. And once again, anything that she does not know, you're not going to leave it blank. You're going to write none. You'll come down further. And this here is basically if these two have ever had an injunction against each other. So if it was him against her or her against him. You would select yes or no and then explain it if that's the case. And then maybe put like the case number if you have it. And then you'll come down further. And basically, if it goes with whatever the situation is, they can exit. And it's basically what the person did to them. As far as were they threatened, were they restrained, were they held against their will. So they would just have to read that and select which one that they decide. And you would come here. 
the day of you them completing this document in front of you would go here. The location would be like the city and state would be here. I'm so sorry. Not the location as to where they're at right now at this moment. The location where this happened. So if this happened at Walmart, you need to write Walmart and then like really small Walmart's address. And this date will be the day that this incident happened. So remember, this is the date, not the day that they're filling it out. The day that the incident happened. So the day it happened and the location that it happened. And then right here, you're going to write what exactly happened. And then if that's not enough space, you'll check here. And they can finish writing on another piece of paper and they can attach it to the back of these documents. And then we'll come down here and basically any this is more information about the respondent. Whether he have like a drug problem, alcohol problem, if he have any kind of weapons or anything like that. Just basically check anything that applies. And then you'll come down further. And then it's basically talking about the mental health of the respondent. Like, has he ever been Baker acted? If he's on any kind of medications, like you would just, to the best of that person's knowledge, fill that out. And then you would come down here. And basically now we're going to talk about the home. Who's going to be able to stay in the home? And that's if the two, the respondent and the petitioner live together. So if they can and cannot stay, you can go ahead and write why. One person might not have anywhere else to go. One person might have children. Whatever the scenario, you would explain it. And basically here, this is basically once again about the home. Is it rented or owned by just a petitioner? Are they sharing it? Is it the respondent's home and the petitioner lives there? So you just got to pretty much figure out which one applies and select only one. You see that? One. You can only check one. And you'll come down here. And if the petitioner and the respondent have children, all of the children's names and date of births would go here. And then you would come down a little further. And right here, they would want to know if these children have been a witness to any of this domestic violence. So if they were there or they were not there, you're going to be able to choose just one. And you'll come down further. And this is basically any other minors um, that were there when this transpired. So say a, a little cousin or something like that was there. So you would need to write the children's name, the parents' names, and the kids' ages. Um, down here, you would come a little further. And this is basically about the, the time-sharing schedule for parenting. So if they share children, then you would check what applies. So basically, if they wanted to do just weekdays or weekends or um, shared visitation, or and basically, it's all just kind of temporary until everything gets worked out. But they want to have something in writing, what your wishes are. And you'll come down further. And then this is if they have any kind of animals. So if they have a dog, a cat, whatever it is, who's going to take possession of the animal? And are they going to share it? Anything like that. So then you would come down further. And this would be about support. So this would be if, say, the petitioner and the respondent have been sharing a residence and now one person is going to stay there. This would be like if they, they're they requesting support because they their half of the bills need to be paid. And so if it, if it applies, you're going to go ahead and check it. If not, you'll just write none and just keep going. So here, you just keep going. Let's see. And if it applies, you just fill it out. And let's see. This is going to be a parental plan. So basically, this is just, once again, about the kids. If there is kids in the home together, 
and it is about the animals and it's about alimony. So if it applies, check it. If it does not, you're just going to write none and move on. And then here we are at the, the bottom of it. So this is where the petitioner would sign their name. They would write the day you're completing this document. And then they would print all their information there. So their name, their address, um, the phone number, if they have a fax number at work or anything like that, and the email address if they have one. And once they complete all of that, then it's your turn as the notary. And you would put the county, the state would already be there, and you would put your date, and you would make sure to remember to check physical presence because they're physically in front of you. Because there is online notarization, so that could be into play. So you just make sure you select the correct one. And remember I said buy. After buy, you're going to put that person's name who's showing you their identification. Not your name. If it says me, then your name will go there. But in this instance, it says buy. So the person's name who has shown you their identification name will go there. And... You, as the notary, would sign your name here. You would print your name here. You would check that they produce identification. And then you would write what type of identification they showed you, which could be a driver's license, uh, a state identification card, a passport. Whatever it is they showed you, you're going to go ahead and write that there. And then finally, you're going to stamp it. And then you'll give it back to this person. And this is a pretty simple document. It's pretty much the person being able to have time to read all of this information and decide what applies to their situation. So ultimately, I would just say make sure you give yourself enough time when a person asks you to notarize these type of documents right here because it's going to take them a little longer. Because they're going to need to read through it and they might have questions because they might have never done these kind of documents before. But now you have seen the document so you kind of know what to expect and you can kind of answer any questions that they might have. Alrighty, well I want to thank you again for coming by my channel and look out for more notary documents. Take care.